Thank you all for coming and welcome to the Key to Truly Harmonious Connections. This is gonna be um, part one of two in Wisconsin. I'll lead another one where um, Wisconsin Dells, I'm in Wisconsin right now, but Wisconsin Dells, um, the Universal Unity Warriors are gonna come through and talk about that aspect of Truly Harmonious Connections. But today it's the Truly Harmonious Connection Warriors. So truly speaking to the source of it. And I was flipping through the initial book I channeled and I thought a good way to start it off before I start channeling them is reading something um, directly from them. The Elfian warrior domain has two tribes. One is called the tribes of free will and the other is the peacemakers. Um, so the tribes of free will, divine justice warriors, freedom warriors, and universal unity. And the peacemakers are the warriors of kindness, truly harmonious connections, and universal tranquility. The truly harmonious connections, um, warriors, I am gonna take a quote directly from them to open up the space. Um, anyway, this is a message that someone in the room or listening to this needs to hear. Um, the connection elves will tell you how you can free yourself from negative connections. Um, a good way to start. Kindly distance yourself from negative connections. Explain why the connection is not healthy for either of you. Once you pinpoint the negative, the negative grabs, there is a polarity. Some negative emotions may surface. It only deeply affects the bond if the emotions of negativity are the majority of the emotions felt. Start spreading positivity to yourself and others. Distance do not, does not always have to be permanent, but keep in mind that many people's true nature surface when distancing is present. Allow yourself and others to grow. Do not keep yourself or anyone else in a bubble of an old image. They'll explain a little bit more about what they meant about that in our class today. As well as I'm gonna reference the crystals that I have sitting behind me. Um, because one of the big things that the Elfian warriors work with is the seven deadly concepts or the seven deadly sins and their influence on things. So how do we overcome them? How do we heal them? How do they affect our relationships? You know, we're obviously, you know, with general Christianity, we're familiar with them, but there are concepts we can apply to understand the influence of things in our own lives, as well as connections. Like, how is greed influencing our relationships with others? How is pride? How is wrath? How are those things influencing things? So they had me bring crystals, and I was dealing with my own little issue with harmonious connections, and these are the crystals that helped me. Um, Amazonite, Tiger's Eye, Hematite, Aventurine, Clear Quartz, Carnelian, and Citrine. And they had me bring it into the space to highlight and have those crystalline energies. And I offer you to borrow them as well um, to help you in your journey of allowing truly harmonious connections and overcoming the negative polarities influence in your relationships. They first taught me that if there are all seven present, that that connection might not be harmonious. But there's deeperness to it. It's if they're present, it's causing you to, to evaluate the relationship. If there's a lot of envy, if there's a lot of lust influencing your relationship, it's a cause to evaluate it. And then to, from that point, is it the, this is just something that this person is bringing to me or are they coming and influencing from outside sources? So that's a way to evaluate, is my connection unharmonious because these outside things are coming through or have they always been unharmonious and now I'm experiencing all of these negative emotions as a result. So that was a little, another introduction. So a divine feminine, um, truly harmonious connections warrior, Elfian, would like to come through and continue speaking on that point and the point I mentioned from the book. And at the end, she'll open the forum for questions as well. So I'll let her step forth. I'm gonna astral project to my soul origins um, and allow them to come forth when I have safely stepped back. So truly harmonious connections warrior, divine feminine from the Elfian warrior, domain of the Elfian realm, please step forth now. Hello, beautiful souls. I could already see things resonating and clicking in all of you. Um, it was going to be a divine masculine one, but there's a lot of divine feminine energy in the room, so I'm going to come and speak to that as well. Um, also, because a lot of times in connections, the feminine version of the counterpart tend to take on a lot of the weight, a lot of the stress, a lot of the carrying the burden of the relationships, whether it be friends, family, or romantic relationships, the feminine energy tends to carry a lot of it because the feminine energy is more empathic, more emotional, um, and more intuitive. And so how do you 
determine, you know, your discernment versus fear? How do you balance doubt versus intuition? What What's going on there? And there's a lot of balancing within the feminine um, frequency. And whether you're a male in the physical form who you need to connect to your divine masculine energy or female in the physical form who you've been radiating more on the masculine energy and need to bring back in the feminine side as well because oftentimes what we've observed is recently a lot, a lot of you have been taking on the masculine role of providing and protecting for yourself. Because a lot of the connections that you keep being drawn to aren't harmonious. And when they're harmonious, you're gonna feel the balance of the divine masculine and feminine within you, the maternal and paternal energies within yourself as well. And there's gonna be that partnership where you're balancing together. So that was the first message that needed to come through um, to all of you, is that knowing that you have you know, your divine masculine self, your divine feminine self, your divine maternal self, and your divine paternal self within you. Healing your relationships with the energies of both and balancing them within yourselves and ensuring that the partner that you're choosing has those wounds healed and those energies healed. And partner as in also friendship too, because the friends that you surround yourself with is the energy that you're surrounding yourself with. So to the crystals, we had our communicator bring. Well, Amazonite is a really good one for helping communication. And which one of the seven concepts of lower frequency can influence your communication? Honestly, all of them. Um, but one in particular is pride. Because when you're feeling prideful and you're feeling more egotistical and you're feeling more like, well, I'm in the right and I'm not gonna admit that I'm wrong, or someone else is constantly fueling their ego and, and not acknowledging that they've done something to hurt you, that is an influence that's gonna block your throat chakras. So it's knocking one chakra out of alignment and in tune, knocking your minor communication body out of alignment, um, which actually is a major body system as it's connected to all of the five, um, but it's minor in regards to how we label the body systems. Um, it's that, that influence of ego interference and pride and not wanting to acknowledge wrong from either someone to you or you to someone else. But also that causes doubt too. So there's a lot of influences of, of doubt, uncertainty, and you know not willing to be accountable. That can cause a block in the throat chakra. And then pride is often the main cause of it. So we use these to identify one of the main causes. So one thing to reflect on in your connections is if you you're have a relationship in question. So if I can ask you all to think if there's a relationship, you're all drawn to, to this class for a reason. So if there's a relationship you're questioning of whether or not it is truly harmonious and for your highest good and their highest good. Because it's not just about your highest good, because if you're only thinking about your highest good, then that's you know being selfish and then fueling the pride. So thinking about what's in your both of your best interests? You know, making sure you're putting yourself first, but also them. If there's a relationship you have in question about it's harmonious, I'd like you to think about it at this time and maybe try and apply what I'm teaching to uh, that relationship. So for the pride, is there someone in your life that constantly won't be accountable, constantly won't listen to you, constantly shuts down your emotions and your feelings? And this could be a friend, this could be a family member, this could be a child, this could be a parent, this could be a romantic partner too. Or it could even be a coworker, it's any relationship. Now we tend to speak of it as from the romantic relationship standpoint because oftentimes that's where our heart goes to, that's where we think of first. Because we don't think that we're gonna have disharmony with our friends, we picked our friends, we love our friends. With our family, it's our family, you know? That's the family we chose to have and, and it's our family. So we don't tend to think of that first. So us as the warriors, we're gonna speak as if we're speaking about romantic relationships, but it can be applied to any relationship. So think about it, is, is there someone? So if there is, are you being too prideful? Because a lot of times when you all start seeking spiritual work, it's, well, I, I couldn't possibly be the one in the wrong. Sometimes there's a lack of that accountability. It's all these things that were happening to me, you know? I'm the victim. Well, victim mentality is, is part of pride. And so is antagonizing somebody all the time as well. So a key to balancing and balancing both your, you know, your maternal, paternal, masculine, feminine, just harmony in general is acknowledging when you actually have been the victim and when you have been the antagonist and accepting and forgiving. You're going to hear us say that a lot, forgiving yourself. You don't need, no, nobody, nobody needs to, to worry about, I don't need to go and ask this person for forgiveness. What matters is I forgive myself. 
That's what matters. That's the important part here. I forgive myself. I, I don't need to beg for someone's forgiveness. I don't need to apologize constantly to somebody because they might not accept it. So what matters is I forgive myself if I did something wrong. And if somebody did something wrong to me, I forgive them, but I don't need to tell them necessarily. I don't need to go to them and be like, I forgive you for this thing and all these things that you did wrong. They might not necessarily, it's not important for them to hear it. It's important that you acknowledge it. That's acknowledging things is key. So thinking about that, if, if you were either the antagonist or, or you were the victim in that, in that scenario, how is pride influencing that connection? And think about it, is it influencing it because it, it's getting in the way and, and there's something else to be resolved? Or is it just that that person is very egotistical and it's just not compatible? Or is it that that person causes you to be very in the egoic self, in the lower self? And that's not often talked about is, is sometimes someone's energy can drop your frequency so much that it causes you to act from that place. And so you're like, I, I feel lower. I feel like I've lost myself because someone's energy is bringing you to that place. And then you may be resonating in the same frequency when they brought you to their level, but that doesn't mean it's harmonious. Truly harmonious connections is in harmony, in balance, in enlightenment, in your highest self. Not two lowest selves getting along, because two lowest selves would not get along if you were being in your highest self. So when we're referencing truly harmonious connections, it's your highest self the highest version of yourself, balancing in harmony, somebody who raises you up and you raise, raise them up as well. And a lot of times there are family connections that just sadly don't offer that and cause you to feel ashamed and shameful. And so that can cause a disbalance in the sacral chakra. That's where carnelian comes in. Carnelian works with the sacral chakra. And a lot of traumas can be stored in the sacral chakra. And when you're experiencing gluttony, so, you know, gluttony, we don't want to be like, oh, is it, is it overeating? Is it this? Is that... How we're referring to gluttony is just overindulgence in anything. So it could just be um, causing, like, as a way to cope with trauma and pain, maybe you do something in excess too much. Maybe scrolling on your phone too much. Again, since by the energy in the room, maybe it doesn't happen as often to scroll on the phone as much. But it could also be, like, can't live without coffee. Can't, causing a dependency on something else because you're feeling a lack within yourself. And... You know, we're, we're, we're blunt beings. We are blunt beings. We're not going to sugarcoat anything. And because it's in your best interest to know that if you are causing a dependency on something else, that's what we're referencing. So we're going to change the name from gluttony to just codependency because that's a nicer word. Gluttony has so much negative connotation if there's too much codependency. So we're going to change that seven deadly concept to name concept to codependency. So pride and codependency. Is there too much codependency going on? You can be dependent on one another without it being in excess. Anything in excess is, is too much, of course. So ask yourself, with this relationship, is there too much codependency on one side or the other? And in this relationship, am I able to be independent and be dependent, know the balance of both? And is this person able to? If the answer is no to either one of them, then it isn't necessarily that the connection isn't can't be harmonious, but it's just at the current time, it's just not. And you're gonna keep dragging each other down if you keep feeding the codependency. It's something to heal within yourselves. Because oftentimes that attaching on is because there's something else that happened you're trying to heal. You wanna heal that within yourself. Everyone has trauma, even if somebody feel like this person isn't, you know, you know, causing me to be a victim, everyone has their own trauma that they're acting from. And for truly harmonious connections, if somebody hasn't dealt with their trauma at all and is acting from their traumatized state, from a traumatized inner child, sadly, unfortunately to say, if you're doing your work and they're not, it's not gonna be harmonious. And you're not gonna help each other by keeping that contact if they're not putting in the same work that you are. And this could even be with families. A lot of people go no contact with their parents or sometimes even their children too, just because they're not willing to put in that effort to grow, to separate, to expand, to be their strong, independent self while still knowing when you can rely on others. Because hyper-independence, so related to that, it's your codependency too. If you're hyper-independent and you feel like you can't rely on anybody or you can't rely on that person, that's also something to think about as well. Because you feel like you can't rely on them because they're unreliable or 
because of something else going on inside. It's asking yourself those questions and not assuming one thing over the other. Well, I, I can't rely on them because they're unreliable. And, it's, and also, I couldn't rely on, on my mom because my mom did this to me and I can't rely on this person. And Okay, well, center yourself first. Heal what's going on inside. And if you still feel like they're unreliable, then it was them that was unreliable. But taking that time to look inward. And it, it's a scary thing to do to take that acknowledgement of maybe there's something going on within me that I need to heal because we notice that in humans. You are so quick to point fingers to others, but it's really hard to put that, point that finger to yourself. And when you point that finger to yourself, you're honoring your soul because you're like, I'm going to acknowledge what I've done wrong. I'm going to clear my karma. And you want to honor your soul, not dishonor your soul. And so I want to change lust to dishonoring your soul because I don't like that, that human word, that sound frequency. So when are you dishonoring your soul? Citrine is connected to the solar plexus. And when you're, and so is tiger's eye, but tiger's eye is for something else. Uh, citrine is connected to the solar plexus. So are you dishonoring your soul? That's it. That's what you need to think about. Is, is this connection dishonoring your soul? Are, are you feeling every day like my soul is dying inside? I can't do this anymore. I can't, like I feel like my soul is dying. It could be even in your work. Like your boss is just killing your soul and you feel like your soul is dying all the time. And you're feeling a friendship. Like I can't be my authentic self with you. I'm dishonoring, dishonoring my soul. Oh, there's definitely someone dishonoring their soul because that, that came out a few times. Um, because I'm not being authentic to myself. That's dishonoring your soul. So yeah, they want to say lust, whatever. It's dishonoring your soul and whatever that may be. Now, it could be the physical relations that, I'm an elf, I don't understand. But it could also be that you're not being your authentic self. So are you dishonoring your soul? Are they dishonoring their soul? Is there something that they want to do and, and they're not able to do it because of certain circumstances? Is dishonoring the soul happening? Okay. And can it be fixed? Can you learn to honor your souls together? Or is it where you need to spend some time apart? Now for the family relationships, you choose your family for specific reasons, but you, again, we say it so many times, you don't want to allow a toxic family connection in the physical to get in the way of a harmonious spiritual connection that will find you in the physical form. There are some connections that are created to be a roadblock between you and your harmonious connections, between you and your soul tribe. There, it, it's hard to acknowledge it. I love them, I love this person, I don't want to live without them. But you have, technically, unless it's your, your soulmate that's been with you since the incarnation of your soul, and even then, you've lived lifetimes without connecting to them. Your soul has lived in the non-physical and in the physical without these people before. So it's important to realize that as the physical form and in your physical, Life, you can get very consumed with the right here and the right now, but the soul can see the overarching, the overarching story. And if you're getting so stressed about the right now and it's draining your energy in any way, and I could just say the key is if it's draining your energy in any way, let it go. But humans want details, <laughs> details into things. Because sometimes that just general message, you know, but how are they draining my energy? I'm gonna give you the how. This is the how through the crystals. It's important to know the how, though, because just saying, if they're draining your energy, let them go, but you might not know how they're draining your energy or if they're draining your energy or if, or if you're draining your own energy because of your own trauma and experiences and projecting it onto another person. That could be something, too. Hematite. Hematite. That's for greed. That, that's, that's to heal any relationships with, with greed and, and, and just materialism. I want to change it to materialism. And that's being too stuck in the physical and not acknowledging the soul. So just simply, are you able to acknowledge your soul and your spiritual work in your relationships with others or are they causing you to hide? And why? So ask yourself, why would they cause me to hide? Why would they cause me to, to hide my, my, my true authentic self? Or am I causing somebody else to hide? It's just asking yourself that, pondering that. Because also, with the frequency of greed, people can get very greedy with time, with love. And so we'll keep it for greedy about time and love. And so is someone not allowing you to have your own time? 
as someone being greedy for your love and not allowing you to have connections with others, a lot of times in toxic relationships or narcissistic abusive relationships in whatever form they may be, they don't want you to have other friends, they don't want you to talk to, to other guys, they don't want you to spend time with your other family, they, you know, it's only one in-law all the time. It's, they're being greedy for your time and for your love. Or maybe are you doing that to somebody else? So unconditional love is the solution. And if there isn't unconditional love, there's something to evaluate, whatever it is. I'm not saying cut off every single connection, but it's important to evaluate. And how many of these deadly to relationship concepts are showing up in your relationship, specifically the one in question. Because the one in question is coming forth either because it's not harmonious or because there's something going on within it that you can heal or they can heal or there's something that needs to be healed. And relationships help you grow. You need relationships to grow. Your connections with others are your biggest test to your spiritual development. Um, and time frequency elementals are like, okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm getting there. Okay, so what have, what have we done so far? <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, okay. So we've done pride. We've done lust. We've done gluttony. We've done greed, okay? Sloth, sloth, tiger's eye. So tiger's eye can help with that, that sloth, sluggishness, tiredness, unmotivation, uninspiredness. Is a relationship making you feel unmotivated, uninspired, drained? Is it, change it from sloth, is it draining your energy and making you feel uninspired? Or you're feeling like everything that you love to do before this connection or everything that you want to do but you feel like you can't do because of this person's influence on your life? Is it making you feel drained, like you were exhausted all the time, you can't function, you can't do anything, it's making you feel uninspired. You're like, I have these things I want to do, I'm just not motivated, I'm not inspired to do them, and I, I don't understand why. The uninspiration and unmotivation comes from being drained. Is it draining? Simply, is it draining you? Is it taking away your energy to where then you're draining your own energy even more because you can't move, you can't do the things you wanted to do? So now, you're laying down all the time and you're not truly sleeping and astral projecting, but you're just not moving anymore. And you're not moving anymore, whether it's physically or spiritually, you're just not moving, you're not growing, you're not changing. Relationships that are harmonious, they're going to cause you to change. They're going to cause you to grow because you need to grow. It's important to grow, to make sure the balance is established, to make sure your harmony is still in harmony. You're going to need to change and grow and evolve and help people and do work and change. And is it just nothing is changing? Nothing is growing and you feel stagnant and still and your energy isn't moving. Let's change sloth to stagnant. Is it stagnant? Is everything stagnant? And it's a cycle and everything's repeating over and over and over again and you're exhausted. If you're feeling exhausted on a soul level, your soul is crying to you, please, let's move on. And it can be hard but I got the love of my guardian angels. I got the love of my spirit team. I got the love of my harmonious connections that either are with me or will find me. And I can do a little secret. Animals, a lot of purely positive animals like dogs, cats, animals, they hold a lot of harmonious energy within them. And so it could just be connecting to an animal can give you that support to get you through a tough time. So someone in here, someone in here, someone listening has an animal um, that they can rely on and depend on during times of, of trouble. So connect to them. So next one is, so we got, we got wrath and we got envy. <laughs> and um, so which crystals are left? Clear quartz? Clear quartz. Clear quartz can clear that envy. Clear quartz can clear that wrath. Clear quartz can work for all of these things. We know we're, we're, we're breaking it down. But envy, we're going we're gonna to touch on adventuring because adventuring is going to help a lot with clearing. Um, clearing envy. Wrath is with that clear quartz. Okay. So recap. We've done the pride. We've done the gluttony. We've done the greed. We've done the lust. We've done the sloth. Okay. Wrath. Anger, are you angry all the time? Simple, are you angry all the time? I mean, there's really not much I have left to say about that except are you angry all the time? And are they angry all the time? And are you fighting all the time? Because that is telling you, anger is telling you something isn't resonating. 
there is a disjustice, there is something. Anger isn't a bad emotion. It's just telling you that something isn't resonating. And if you're constantly angry with each other all the time, and that relationship specifically, like they are angry with you all the time, and you are angry at everyone, and anger keeps going around in a circle and causing and wreaking havoc, or do they have anger issues they can't control their anger? Because it means something within them isn't resonating. If, if you have anger issues, it's something isn't resonating. There's something wrong. There's something unacknowledged. Anger is a coping mechanism to ignore something that's unresolved. So can the anger be resolved or can it not? And do you think if you think you can resolve it, can they? And can they without you interfering? Can they on their own? Because to understand your anger, you have to do it yourself. And nobody can do it for you because it's something that's happening within you. So to heal your anger, you have to reflect within and are they willing to do that at this time? And if not, and you feel like they're weighing you down, like you can stay and support people. Of course you can stay and support people, but if you've been supporting them for so long and they're draining your energy and nothing is changing, that's not harmonious because you're not helping each other. They're using you as a crutch and they're also draining your energy and then you start, and it, it's all a cycle. See, it's all a cycle. So you do a disservice to them by staying and letting them drain your energy for so long. Because a lot of people don't experience that wake up call until they're alone. And maybe they will and the connection will come back and it'll be harmonious. Like we said in, in our initial um, channeled message that it may just be a temporary. But as a soul, you know that that temporary is short. It's like the blink of an eye. Because you can go through a lifetime within a blink of an eye for the soul. It is, it's so quick for the soul. For the physical form, it's all of these things. Then you feel like you want to reestablish and, and it's all that stress. Release. Release the stress. Because it's all going to work out in divine timing. But simply, clear courts, clear. Clarity. And, and anger can cloud your mind and cloud your judgment all the time. And people say, I did this out of anger. I did that out of anger. I did this out of anger. I did that out of anger. Clearly, they're not in control of their mental body. If, if they're not remembering the things that they're doing or they're allowing anger to control the way that they're acting, they're clearly not in control of their body systems. And so do you want to be party to that? Do you want to be experiencing that? Now, some, some people may say, yeah, I, I, I think that it's just this temporary thing. I can stay, but oh, that doesn't resonate. Someone maybe has said that and it's just not resonating in the heart. That, that's dishonoring your emotional body. Someone else. In some cases, some people just have temporary anger issues because they lost a loved one and they need your support. But if it's been going on for years and, and it, it keeps going on and it's causing you pain and causing you to be angry as a result, it's not harmonious. It's harmonious on the lower self level, but we're not talking about that. That's, that's disharmony on the lower self level and it's working. Um, on a higher self level, that, that doesn't work. Adventuring envy. Envy is judgment, envy is jealousy, envy all the things. So is there jealousy and is there judgment involved? All the time. And is it your discernment and your intuition telling you there's something wrong? Or is it fear trying to cause a disruption in a relationship? So with envy, it's really, is it fear causing judgment? So there's absence of love, so it's missing love. So the connection is missing love is coming from fear or the connection is missing love because it's your intuition telling you something so learning the difference between the fear judgment envy and your intuition telling you there's something wrong and here's the way you can tell clear as day simple how do you react is it urgency is that i need i need to do this now i need to do this now i need to do this now it's urgency it's frantic it's fearful then it's coming from fear or is it i just i feel like this isn't right you get it I feel like you're talking about me behind my back and I really don't like it. I, I feel like you're betraying me. I, I, I feel like I can't be in this connection anymore because you're not being the father you're supposed to be. You're not being the husband you're supposed to be. You're not being the friend you're supposed to be. You're not being the sister you're supposed to be. I, I can't. Is it calm? Is it compassionate? Is it respectful? Is it coming forth in a way that it's just like, I feel like something's wrong and I need to be away from this, but it's coming from love. That's the way to tell. And it's because someone's fearful doesn't necessarily mean that the relationship isn't harmonious. It just means that love is missing. So can the love be added to it? Or is it just not possible at that time or at this time? 
Now, I want to open if anybody has questions right now, questions at all, um, or if you feel more comfortable asking them after the channeling's over, that's fine. But if anybody does, you can shout out a question. If not, we'll, we'll conclude. Okay, perfect. Well, that is all I, as a Truly Harmonious Connection uh, warrior, have to say on Truly Harmonious Connections. And the key I want to give you at this time, so there's two, the Universal Unity ones, we'll, warriors will give you the other one, but the key I want to give you right now is, do you feel in harmony? Do you feel balanced? Do you feel aligned? Or do you feel knocked out of balance every time you go around this person? And if that's the case, well, you're not staying in harmony. So if you're not in harmony, how can the relationship be harmonious? If it's knocking you out of balance all the time, that's the last thing I'll leave you with. So I typically, when I channel, I see images. I heard something, something's coming to me. I'm like, okay. Uh, <laughs> but um, also some things, um, I just, they showed me pictures of things. Um, they showed me like a, a heart pulsing in a tree. So I don't know who that's for, um, but just kind of like a heart needs healing from nature. And so just kind of pointing to the fact that we can give a lot of our trauma, we can give a lot of our anxiety, our fears, and our worries to trees to be reconstituted into light. So just asking the tree, can you take this and reconstitute it into light? Um, petrified wood can help with that as well, carrying petrified wood with you, um, even connecting to the ground and the roots of things. Um, it's just allowing nature to um, take from you what no longer serves you to reconstitute it into the light. Um, that was uh, really one of the main visuals that came through because a lot of things I was hearing, and I'm like, okay. Um, but I also saw that they were, um, the other truly harmonious connection warriors were kind of walking around and they were delivering, delivering like each of you a tiny little message of like that feeling of resonation or that feeling of like, okay, this is for me. Um, and that like feeling you felt is them telling you this is the message for you and your answer uh, to your question. Because they were showing me that each of you had a question or you did have a relationship in question or maybe them asking you to think about it made you think about it and they were helping give you the answers. Um, because it's not always that the relationship is unharmonious because there are these negative things. It's just these negative things are knocking it out of balance. But it could be if all the negative things are patterning, um, which I saw one person in particular, I just saw an angry man yelling all the time, and he was just like, it was like very angry, and they could be for any of us, but someone is angry and yelling yeah, all the time. Girl <laughs> angry and yelling all the time. And so that just like, to me, that, that visual coming through was just telling me, okay, Okay, like this, this is because sound frequency, that's the last thing I'll say like with the, the video and then talk um, private, but um, sound frequency causes disruption or it can help. And so when someone's yelling all the time, it causes a disruption. It causes a disruption of your chakras, specifically your throat, and just constant like loud noise or if someone can only listen to like loud music blaring all the time chakras and everything's being disrupted. So if it's loud all the time and you can't even quiet to hear yourself think, maybe there's some disharmony. Because harmony, you think of like angels singing in blissfulness and it's not loud and crazy and chaotic all the time. Chaotic energy is not a match for someone who like all of you is seeking um, higher connection. So I'll end this. Stay inspired to everyone who's watching this uh, video and stay tuned for um, the universal unity parts. Goodbye for now.